All right, so we got a bunch of live bait. We drifted this big flat area with our live bait until we ran out. So some bluefish were around. We caught a bunch of nice bass. Some bluefish tore up what we had. So when our live bait's gone, we find a nice contour to set up anchor on, and we set the chunks out. We've already caught some nice fish doing this. And I'll start with small chunks. Eric will show you how we do it. So I'll take and I'll cut the head off right behind the gill. Man, that nice, good. I'll cut the tail off as close as I can from the fins because that'll keep us from spinning around. And then we're going to do small chunks with this small piece of bunker. Okay, so you see we got four pieces out of that. Normally, if you've seen videos that we do, we usually have big baits, right? Well, there's a lot of small fish mixed in here, and we do have the kids with us, so we want to catch every fish that's around. So these small pieces, obviously, you know, they're going to be better for some of these medium, small size fish. So if you're swinging for the fences, take a whole one. So, so if Eric will take a whole one, you'll see he'll just cut the head and the tip of the tail off. And we'll put a whole one out there. You got plenty of bait and you're swinging for the fences that's the piece you want right there i mean that'll just ooze those oils and amino acids out for a long time you can leave it out in the water if you longer. want you could yeah, it's, nice yeah, it's those amino acids that leak out that's what the fish smell and taste in the water you know change these baits out every 20 minutes even with some of those bigger ones you know if you're going to a half an hour 40 minutes here you're not doing yourself any favors. You gotta keep fresh bait, fresh bait always working, always working. That's the secret to whacking them on a chunk. Gotta keep that in mind when you're buying, if you have to buy bait, you know, don't just, you know, buy your three or four bunker for the day. You only use a small, no, no, no. You buy 30, 40. <laughs> Insert record scratch here, right? I know if you're buying bait, 30 to 40 bunker, I mean, especially fresh bunker, that's a little piece of money there, but I tell you, number one with a bullet, most important thing, cut bait fishing, got to have lots and lots of fresh bait. Sometimes we'll spend most of the day getting bait. If bait's tough to get, we'll end up spending more time getting bait than actually fishing because it's so important. We're constantly working, you know, uh, 20 minutes max, and we're, we're changing baits out. And we'll save those chunks uh, that we replace, and we'll, we, you know, we'll chum those up into little tiny pieces. But we also keep fresh chum going in the water, just little tiny pieces. Uh, we have a grinder with a sausage plate on it, so it puts out little pieces like the size of peanut M&Ms. Uh, if you don't have a grinder, just cut up little tiny pieces and just keep them going in the water all the time. But your baits on the hook have got to be fresh. They've got to be full of oil and those amino acids that leak out. That's what brings the fish to the hook. Uh, countless times I've had boats right next to me, surrounded by boats. And, you know, the more we catch, the closer they get. And we just keep catching fish and have some epic days and they can't figure out what's going on. Uh, I mean, they might be doing a few things differently, but the main thing is they're use, usually using smaller bait because the bait's expensive. And a small piece of bait washes out fast. It just turns pale and everything, all the goodies are out of that piece of bait. So they're sitting there and they're just, they don't know what to do. And all they need to do is work, change your baits, constantly change your baits. You know, we'll change them all. We'll chill out for a bit. 5, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, all right, we got to swap them out. Put fresh baits on and throw them out. I mean, you, I know it's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. If uh, you can only go out with a handful of pieces, I mean, you know, do what you got to do, of course. But uh, you, uh, if you want to do one thing to change, you know, your results and really have epic days, get a lot of bait. Be prepared to use it. It's probably the biggest secret in cut bait fishing. And uh, it's a big one. It's a big one. You got to keep the chunks going in. You got to replace them constantly. You got to keep pieces. All the scraps go in the water as chum. And you don't even need a chum bag or nothing. Just these little tiny pieces. You know, just keep them going in the water. All right, I just want to show you the rig here for chunking. Here we have a nine knot. This is a uh, Daiichi Super Chunk Light. Straight shank circle hook. In line. You can see there's no offset in this. This is in case the fish swallows it. And it happens a lot when you're chunking. If it swallows it, fish can tighten up. This will slide right out of the stomach and grab a corner of the mouth. Have about a three to four foot leader, very small barrel swivel, a couple beads just to protect the knot, add a little noise when you're using live bait. And this is just a two ounce slide and egg sinker. You know, a lot of times if you have to use, like we're in a current right now, so we have to use weight. If there was no current, I wouldn't use any weight at all. And Erica's gonna show you how we're hooking the chunks. All I do is I take the chunk, Take the dorsal fin side, right underneath the dorsal fin, 
and out the top. And the big thing is make sure you take the scales off at a point. If the scales are there, you're not going to hook the fish. That's it, nice and easy. It's not real big, keep cranking. Little striper? Yeah, little striper. Nice. You didn't know he was hooked, Justin. You didn't know he was hooked. Come on, bring him over here, Eric. Eric. Small, small thing. Eric, see a net next to me? Oh! Ah, just a ripple there, buddy. Sure. Good job. With a Thor tie. That's how we do it. Good job. All right. Nice male fish. That'll work. That'll work. Good job. Hey. Yeah, it's right there. I see him. Yeah, keep the line tight. Well, we ran out of live bait. We're on a cut bait now. And it's pandemonium out here. There's just so many fish. <laughs> You're doing good, buddy. Woo! You're hitting trash. Bring him to daddy. I'm trying. <laughs> walk back to your dad, but keep cranking. That's it. Walk back to your dad. That is funny, man. Keep cranking. The rod's straight. Keep cranking, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, pull up. Got him, got him. Oh, the good Ooh. <laughs> Jeremy, you're the beast tonight. That's a good big brother. Hurts good, right? Mm -hmm. Good job, brother. Good job. Boom. The key to catching these fish is shallow. We're fishing shallow. We're fishing shallow water next to deep water. Okay, you can we, we can catch a 50 pound fish in two feet of water, especially if that two feet of water has 30 foot within a football field away. So you can fish very shallow as long as there's deep water nearby. Matter of fact, in the deep water, we didn't catch anything at all today. All the fish came on the shallow flats between the deep water. Once we hit 40 feet of water, nothing at all. Every fish came between 10 and 25 feet of water every fish those are the fish that are feeding they're moving up on the flats to eat we can mark fish in the deep channels but chances are they're not eating there's a very good chance they're not eating at all and we don't want to mess with those we want to look for fish that are moving up in the shallow areas that are ready to put the feedback on they're being aggressive they're thrashing and everything that moves they're the ones you're going to hook easy